All right, so I am uh, actually sitting down and talking with the guys from Saltbox, and uh, you guys have uh, kind of been in the hallway all week in what's called Tin Can Alley, and it's been kind of a hot spot, and really kind of the center or the core of the conversations here at MLearn Con. What kind of, uh, what are you talking about with people, and, and tell me what the conversations have been like. It's been exciting. People are uh, showing a lot of interest. Uh, I called it excited confusion. Right. Uh, but it was uh, it was natural. I mean, that, that's what you expect from a new technology. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people are asking about how this is going to apply to them in their daily sure. work. How they're going to help. How it's going to help them serve their internal customers. Uh, how how is this going to impact my current way I deliver and design content and learning right. experiences? Uh, what people were really excited about was the ability for uh, mobile learning to be a uh, part of uh, the entire. Experience for right. for their learners, so uh, that was uh, very exciting too. And we learned a lot from, from from the attendees. They gave us a lot of great feedback on what they want to see, which is important for us to move forward as we move forward with with Tin Can and, and building an LRS. Yeah, well, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you what you guys are doing, but I think it's important to. I mean, it seems like people were asking the right questions. You know what I mean? They are looking at the right things, and and even though they don't completely understand what Tin Can represents, but they do understand the opportunity and maybe the need in learning and development for some of these changes. Um, so that's it's fantastic they were asking those questions. So uh, you guys talk a little bit about your LRS? Um, so we're building a learning record store, which is a key part of the Tin Can ecosystem. The, um, it's what receives all those Tin Can statements, all those, I learned this, I experienced this, I taught so-and-so this thing. Um, and what the result was, et cetera. It's what's eventually going to slot in and start taking on more and more of the role the LMS is doing for reporting, analytics, et cetera, but um, for far more than what an LMS can do. Yeah. The, um, it's also what's going to enable, um, it's what's going to enable people who previously couldn't send learning data in because it didn't fit the LMS model or because it was just too complicated to add stuff into that whole wonderful ecosystem. Without that, what's the value of Tin Can, right? I mean, honestly, exactly. that's that's really kind of the sweet spot. Those kind of tools need to be there for us to really take advantage of that framework, that API. So um, what do you think, uh, from a technical standpoint, you can get geeky if you want about this technical standpoint, what are the big opportunities in this, you know, this uh, standard? I think one of the... I think the big thing that's going to be interesting is mostly in the LRS side. The it's one of the nice things about the standard is it's extremely easy to implement um, things that create statements and send them. There will be people making libraries in various languages to make that easier. Hopefully, a lot of those will be open source, uh, like some of the existing ones are. And then there will be some other supporting architecture like that, but. A lot of that's not very hard. It's using accepted standards that there are already libraries for and making it very easy. So then the challenge comes once that data comes in, what do you do with it? How do you analyze it? How do you understand it? Um, there may be some interesting things for connecting multiple LRSs together uh, because that's entirely possible with the standard, uh, letting you have a group of LRSs synchronize to the same incoming data that then each provide different analytics, different reporting, different capabilities for understanding right. what's happening. Excellent. So, uh, you know, you said open source, and, and one of the things I've noticed is this is not an effort that's like kind of siloed, this whole tin can thing. It's mm -hmm. really is a community, and you guys are having conversation with multiple people, including us, uh, Float, and you're working with uh the ADL folks and Rust to see and all those guys and uh, I think those conversations are the reason that this is actually working. Yeah, and they've been very extremely helpful. Uh, their support very from open. ADL and Rust DC, how open they've been, how they've involved over in the community. So I think one of the things that people are asking is what's what's coming, what's next, what are we gonna do, where we go from here, what do you guys see there? Well, I think a lot of most of the opportunity lies in the richness of data that's going to become available. Traditional learning data, social learning data, things in the penumbra of learning that aren't exactly learning but are clearly closely related. The, so some of the things we're planning to do is we're going to have 
hopefully either we or someone else will have connectors to things like SharePoint, things like Confluence, places where people in the company author things and where they read things. And if we capture both those events, we can do things like we planning to construct an influencer network. And then we can run analytics on that, page rank, possibly things that take into account, test scores and such also, that tell you who the influential people in your organization are. Nice. The, um, which we think will be very powerful. It's, I so, think it's fantastic. Yeah, and also in the, in the future, if we could blend in and tie in business results, performance management objectives, all together, that would really uh, make a, uh, give, you, give the organization a holistic view of, of what's happening in learning, what's happening yeah. at, uh, and the, the business results inside of the business as well. So we're excited about that. Uh, and uh, we're also, uh, right now, we're, we're preparing to get this ready for the next, next three to four weeks. Uh, so I'd encourage anybody to go on <laughs> accelerus.com right. uh, and uh, put your email in and uh, register. And we uh, uh, are offering some great uh, benefits. We're actually going to open it up free for a few months uh, when we launch. And you're doing that because you want that feedback. You want to yeah, you see what, uh, you know, how things are working and maybe okay. make some tweaks and improvements. And I think we're all kind of... In that same space yeah. right now, we're trying to uh, really make sure that we're given the most value. We're, we're taking this to where it needs to go. And I think that's one of the great things about the community right now, all working together. So You guys have done a great job with Tapestry, uh, you know, people like uh, uh, Ruben and MacDeck. I mean, yeah. a lot of different groups out there. We want to get a lot of that data in and, and see what we can do. So the yeah. community is very important and we're excited. So yeah, Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys sitting down and talking to me. and. Uh, Looking forward to seeing what you guys, where you guys take it next. Absolutely. So, Thank you, Jeff. You bet. Thank you. Thank